Hi guys, I'm Claire. Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you about three recent books that I listened to on audiobook. So the first book I wanted to talk to you guys about was We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby. This is a book of essay collections that came out earlier this year. So Samantha Irby is a comedian based out of Chicago. She's known for her blog called Bitches Gotta Eat, and she's written a previous collection of essays called Meaty. I downloaded it on audiobook because it sounded like kind of a fun and fresh book. Her humor is so sharp and so blisteringly funny and observant that um, I would recommend this to anyone. The time that she's writing about is when she was a woman in her 30s living in Chicago. She's really just kind of a regular person working an hourly job living in like a cold ass city. What I think is really really brilliant about this book is that it is laugh out loud funny but she also tackles the fact that she has seen some shit in her life but she tackles those topics with humor and kind of unexpected poignancy that I think adds another layer of, of depth to this book and adds like real heart to it. For example, she's telling one story about driving home from college in the dead of winter in central Illinois with some frat bro friends of hers getting a case of like really like horrible explosive diarrhea and like an incident like on the side of the road with like a McDonald's bag and like I'll let you find that out for yourself and I'm not someone who really enjoys crude humor or like bathroom humor but I was like dying it was so funny and then she immediately goes into a story about like her alcoholic father after that and somehow she's able to balance all of these tones of like insane humor and just like absolute like the ridiculousness of life and then sort of the real like tough parts of life that you just have to laugh about and it kind of made me think of the Carrie Fisher quote which is if my life wasn't funny then it would just be true and that is unacceptable I feel like that almost is Samantha Irby's approach to things I thought it was great I would definitely recommend it um, and it's a pretty easy listen. The next book I listened to was Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. So this book um, sprung from an article that Rennie wrote in I believe it was like 2014. She talks about it in the book but it was an essay of the same title that went viral and then she wrote this longer book kind of addressing that subject matter. And the reason I picked it up is that I think so much of the discussion, at least from my standpoint as an American, so much of the discussion that you hear about race and ethnicity have all been super America-centric. I was interested in this book because it was written by a black British woman, and I don't know much about race relations in the UK. I didn't know that much about the book when I picked it up, so I was almost assuming that it was going to be a book kind of, um, about her life or kind of about personal anecdotes and it's really not. It's more a book that's talking about the history of sort of like race in England. She talks about how when people talk about race so much is focused on the US to the point that England doesn't or, or Britain doesn't always deal with their own racism problems. Everyone is always talking about like the US or the US's history of racism and civil rights and she wants to like shift that back to England and Great Britain. And I think what she talks about at the beginning of the book that I think is really important is she talks about like growing up, she didn't know this history because it's not taught in the UK. So when I was listening to the book, she's kind of going over some historical stuff that I kind of felt like, geez, this almost seems like it's being directed to white readers because it's something that I certainly didn't know about and it sounded like she, it was very like instructive. And I was kind of thinking like, is she like talking to white readers right now though? But then when you think about it, she's saying, no, this is like a history of like my community that I was never taught in school or just like in general isn't like as widely known in England as it should be. So yeah, the book turned out to be a much more research and almost like case study driven book than a book about her own life and her own experiences. She definitely weaves her own experiences into the book um, when relevant, but it's not like you come away from the book knowing her whole biography or a lot of stuff about her, which I think is totally fine. It's really thoroughly researched and thoroughly written, so I think it's a really valuable 
book in that sense but at the same time it's also like very accessible too it's not super academic um or dense and then the last book that i listened to on audiobook was travels with charlie which i actually have a physical copy of i bought it like three or four years ago when i was taking a road trip and i read parts of it but i didn't read the whole thing um, and then I was on a really long drive in Southern California, so I thought I would download the book, listen to it. We're in Steinbeck country now, so I thought it would be really appropriate. This book was published in the early 1960s, and it follows John Steinbeck. He um, takes a road trip across America with his dog, Charlie, who is a French poodle. At this point in his life, I think John Steinbeck was a really acclaimed author quite famous, super successful, and I think he felt that he had lost touch with the real America. He's going on this sort of masculine journey across America. It's kind of presented as this big heroic journey, which is kind of just funny because driving across the country in your car is not that big of a deal. My main problem with this book is that I don't really understand what the point of it is. Throughout the book he's kind of trying to talk to people about politics. I think at that time it was the 1960 election between Nixon and Kennedy that was coming up and people are reluctant to talk about politics. He's also talking about trying to get a read on the state of America and he never really gets it. And at times he's kind of questioning himself about what is the point of this trip? What am I learning about America? And I'm also, while listening, kind of thinking, yeah, what is the point of what you're doing? The book definitely has moments that are really lovely. I think the parts that I thought were most interesting is when he's describing the landscapes of different states, especially in Montana, that is a state that he holds close to his heart. And he just like, waxes on beautifully about it. So I thought that was really great. Another part of the book I loved is when he's in Wisconsin and I might be biased, but he also describes the area in a way that's very evocative and specific to that place. He does the same thing when he gets to the Badlands and he talks about what a desolate place he's been told it is, what a desolate place it looks like, and then he talks about how it completely changes when the sun starts to go down, it completely changes at night, and it becomes this sort of enchanting, beautiful space that I think is just haunting and a beautiful description. So I love the descriptions of the landscape, some of the descriptions of the types of people you meet in those places. I think his descriptions of like, Texas and Texas being its own nation and the types of people you meet in Texas is really awesome and so interesting. But at the same time, much of the book feels very unfocused. It doesn't feel like it has much of a structure. He kind of intersperses the book with these weird tangents about like changing a tire, which like, fine, that's like the reality of driving around on the road, but it's not like he's doing some sort of like, again, it's not like he's on some heroic journey, like changing a tire is like a pretty basic skill. He also intersperses the book with conversations with people, some of which feel very dated. I mean, the language in all of them feels extremely dated and extremely stiff and kind of hokey, which there are a lot of theories um, about how John Steinbeck probably made up a lot of the stuff that's in the book and you can a hundred percent tell because the conversations don't sound like real conversations they sound like sort of like poor dialogue. One thing I will say that was interesting about the book is kind of John Steinbeck's reflections on the idea of change and progress in America. I think for most authors this type of trip would lead them into a lot of nostalgic thinking about America's past and the good old days and traveling west and that type of thing and John Steinbeck definitely talks about feeling those urges of nostalgia but at the same time he's also someone who is very cognizant that change is happening and that progress is good and that even though he kind of like laments the loss of local speech and local accents and local dialect he also notes that like the good old days weren't that great and that progress is good. In general, I know that a lot of people love this book. I would definitely recommend it if you're road tripping throughout the US. The parts that were excellent, like truly soared and were like lovely. On the whole, I don't know if people, if this would be a super famous travelogue if it wasn't written by John Steinbeck. So I don't think it's his best work. 
Um, but it was certainly interesting to listen to while on the road.